hello and welcome to a Thursday live right here on the early line on Sports Grid and all across the Sports Grid network. That includes sportsgrid.com slash watch where you can find your favorite destination to consume everything all across the grid. He is Donnie Wrightside. I am Ben Stevens. We are here together for the next three hours up until 11 a.m. Eastern time. Just four days left in the NBA regular season. An eight-game slate on a Wednesday night we recap for you here on this Thursday morning. Major League Baseball officially as of today. Two weeks into its 2024 campaign, a big debut yesterday in Boston for the Baltimore Orioles. And it's Masters Thursday. The Azaleas in full bloom. Well, maybe not quite yet. Some rain as expected on this Thursday morning at Augusta has delayed the start till about 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. But that will go off. During our three hours, DRS, so Masters Bets, Best Bets, coming your way here before 11 a.m. Hello, friends. Welcome into the network that is Sports Grid right here as we get underway on our Masters Tuna Milk coverage here. And make sure you don't call it the rough. It's the first cut. There are no fans in there. They are not, you know, we're not going to disrespect the Masters. That way to do that here, they are spectators. And certainly, we're going to have a great tournament. But the thing I like about, if you like lower scoring, you might get that today on a Thursday. The one thing we know about the Masters, the greens are so fast and so hard to contain. A lot of rain early in the morning, which means some maybe some low numbers to get out there. So we'll have some fun right away. But it is delayed by two hours, as Ben said, which gives us enough time to cover everything that you need to know here for this tournament. Let's go. Those greenskeepers at Augusta have been drying the place out, bringing yeah. it to a crisp brown because of all the anticipated rain into this opening round on Thursday. Oh, so close. Not fans, not spectators at Augusta, as what my voice they? cracks. Patrons. Patrons. Patrons, as we welcome in the patrons on the Sports Grid Radio Network, Sirius XM Channel 159, all of our radio terrestrial affiliates now in the fold as well. It's the opening hour on a Thursday, live right here on the early line. He is Donnie Wrightside. I am Ben Stevens. Before we get to Augusta, we go back to last night around the NBA. Eight games where seven of the eight had some sort of ramifications and implications on playoff and postseason positioning around the association. We start with the battle for the top spot in the Western Conference at altitude in the mile-high city of Denver. The Nuggets control home floor once again. Their 33rd home victory of the year in their home regular season finale and maybe the most important of the entirety of the campaign. 116-107 behind 41 points from Nikola Jokic the Nuggets win at home over Minnesota and cover as a six and a half point favorite so as of this Thursday morning DRS the Denver Nuggets sit atop the Western Conference no surprise at all as we handicapped it yesterday we knew how good Denver was at home and also the pedigree coming in knowing that they won the championship last year they're used to these high leverage situations maybe the Minnesota Timberwolves just not ready for the spotlight yet no shame in their game they were underdogs in that game weren't able to win it but the focus now is the Denver Nuggets they get that number one seed good luck beating them in the Western Conference playoffs yeah, it's going to be very difficult. Denver 33-8 and eight straight up at home this year in their 41 home regular season games. Also now 21-19-1 and one against the spread. No Carl Anthony Towns yesterday for the Timberwolves, but they expect him to be back at some point in their final two games of this regular season. Now we go elsewhere in the Western Conference after an abysmal loss on Tuesday night at home in the Valley. The Phoenix Suns respond on a Wednesday night in Los Angeles. They lost to the Clippers on Tuesday. They beat the Clippers on Wednesday. Wasn't easy. Phoenix does win by 16. They cover as an 11-point favorite because we didn't see Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, James Harden, or Russell Westbrook for Los Angeles. But Phoenix was down DRS entering that fourth and final quarter. They win by 16, sure. But again, never easy for Phoenix. No, they were supposed to win this game. And if we thought they were waving the white flag the night before by not playing some of their starters, they really waved the white flag here at home for the L.A. Clippers. So the Phoenix Suns needed to get that victory. The final score was nice if you bet the Phoenix Suns. But again, you're right. The question marks still come up. This should have been a runaway victory where you should have had a 37-10 to lead at the end of the first quarter with what the Clippers were actually showing out there on the court. But having said that, good game by the big three for the Phoenix Suns. They did get the victory, and we'll see where it lands. But confidence level for me didn't improve last night. I don't care about that win. 
Yeah, not bought back in by any means. Nope. Devin Booker, 37 points. Bones Highland on the other side for the Clippers, also 37 points. If you are buying back into Phoenix, you see the big three, KD, Bradley Beal, and D-Book combined for 87. Maybe there is some optimism there. But the hottest team in the NBA at this moment, winners of five in a row in 16 of their last 18 that is the Dallas Mavericks. The Mavs continue to win on the road nearly by 20 in South Beach. 111-92. Line worked against the Mavs prior to tip, but they still cover as a two-and-a-half-point road favorite against Miami. Luka Doncic, a pretty easy 29-point, nine rebound, nine assist performance. And not only have they won five straight, they've covered in five in a row as well. Big game in the standings, too, in the Eastern Conference. Take a look at the Philadelphia 76ers waking up with a smile on their face from this game and also Orlando. That's a bad performance by the Heat because you're saying to yourself, who actually needs this game technically more and really was yeah. the Miami Heat as we looked at that price point yesterday. Ah, take the Heat at home, right? They got blown out in this game. The Mavericks are a team to watch in the Western Conference, but I was disappointed in the Miami Heat effort with so much at stake yeah. on the line here for them. If they win a couple games, they might even get into the sixth seed. Looks like they might be resigned to the play-in round and also not even that first seed in the play-in round now. Miami falls to the eighth spot in the Eastern Conference, two games behind Indiana. The Pacers holding on to that sixth and final spot out of the play-in tournament. So because of the Dallas win and the L.A. loss yesterday, they are going to play each other in the postseason for the third time in the last five years. The Clippers have won each of the previous two playoff series. A game separates L.A. and Dallas for who has home floor advantage. Technically, the Clips right now in that four spot. No Giannis and Tentacumpo last night for Milwaukee, but they win by nearly 20 at home by 18. Big game BP. Bobby Portis, 30 points. Damian Lillard scores 29 against the Magic, who entered as a road favorite. So a big win there in the first game without Giannis, who the Bucks confirmed yesterday. DRS will be out for the remainder of this regular season. I was right yesterday that one of these teams would be held to under 100 points, but I was wrong on the total itself because it slightly eclipsed what number we were looking at in that 215 and a half range. Tough scene all the way around, but a tough scene for the Orlando Magic, who now the Sixers yeah. also have them in the crosshairs. But the Bucs needed a victory and got it yesterday. Former Buck, new Celtic, Drew Holiday agrees to a four-year, $135 million extension with the Celtics. That's good news for Boston. They will enter the NBA postseason with home floor advantage the entirety of the time. MLB debut for Jackson Holiday yesterday for the Orioles. He goes hitless, but at least the O's still get a win in Fenway. And I believe you got an RBI, too, which means if you're lining up, you don't need a base hit in order to get an RBI. It's the way to go, people. Ah. RBI props, woo-hoo-hoo, all summer long. And some college basketball news. You saw John Rothstein quickly depart yesterday as his phone was blowing up because of this. Kentucky plans to meet with Baylor's head coach, Scott Drew, for the opening in Lexington. We'll have more on that later in the show. Now around the association, up next. him up as a Heisman Trophy winner, and he lights the league on fire like C.J. Stroud over a Bryce Young, you might not make it as a head coach in your regime here. I just don't think they can pass over Daniels at number two. He's sitting at 5.8 goals, saved above average. He has been standing on top of his head for this team, but defense has to help him out a little bit. The Red Wings defense comes alive just a bit. I think that they're definitely going to punch their card. The Early Line, only on Sports Grid. Victor Hoffman right now can probably hit it right where he's looking on the range. But the problem is when you get out to a golf course, especially like Augusta National, it's a big, big picture. You can see yeah. every shot in the world, but the targets are really, really small. I feel like whoever we pick is going to win. Like, I feel like we have the power to choose the winner of the tournament. I know. I'm surprised more guys haven't reached out. I, I, and they might, and they probably will. Only on Sports Grid. 89-87, 0.6 seconds remaining. Big drama here in this game. Always frustrating when your final four parlay and bracket gets busted. But here we go. I'm done. Look what he is now. 
He's on FanDuel, plus 120. Almost even money to win the tournament. So you actually, if you did get him at plus 260, you got a pretty good, better investment than you had before. Just saying. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event the atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. Live right here on this Thursday on the early line on SportsGrid. Just four days remain. In the NBA's regular season. Today, tomorrow, that's Friday. Saturday in the regular season finale day with all 30 NBA teams in action on Sunday. Then it's the postseason. Play in tournament first. Playoffs after that. So, big games yesterday. In the eight that we had on a Wednesday evening around the association. Seven of the eight with at least one team in hopes of postseason positioning and implications for the NBA playoffs. In the biggest game of the day, the marquee matchup out in the Mile High City between the Denver Nuggets and the Minnesota Timberwolves. Two teams that enter with the same exact record, tied for the top spot in the Western Conference. But after a nine-point victory for the Nugs, taking care of business in their home regular season finale Denver stands alone atop the Western Conference all by themselves 116 107 the victory for the Nuggets they cover as a six and a half point home favorite their 41st and final home game in the regular season Donnie might have been their biggest win of the entire year Yeah, it was, and this is what we look forward to when you take a look at a team that's already been to the top of the mountain and scaled it and won a championship. You expect them in big moments at home when the pressure is on to perform just like you thought a champion would perform, and that was Nikola Jokic last week. Last night, absolutely undeniable, the best player right now in the NBA in the biggest moment. You superstars are supposed to shine, and he did that. But how about this, the Minnesota Timberwolves, right? They lose 116 to 107. No, I said, like, there's no shame in that. You were underdogs in that game. Let's see if you could rise to the occasion. We were hoping to get Carl Anthony Towns possibly back in this game, and he didn't play. It's okay. It's not the end of the season. You're probably not going to get a home court advantage. But still, showing up and putting on a decent show, you had to see that fourth quarter here. It was very close all the way through. And also, the Minnesota Timberwolves, Ben, as a team, shot 50% from the floor, 43% from three-point range in a pressure environment in Denver in elevation. That shows out well for the playoffs. This wasn't a game where Denver goes, you know what, watch this. We're used to these situations. 121 88 an exact blowout in a game that you know the minnesota timberwolves needed here i thought they performed well they're just not as good overall as the denver nuggets particularly on the road which now denver's going to have that advantage as possibly yeah. getting that number one overall seed and really wrapped it up i think last night with that victory but i take away from this game Minnesota played well in that environment. There's some good things on the horizon, which again includes Carl Anthony Towns coming back. But that was a Nuggets night last night. Impressive all the way through. Nice win for them. Number one seed, tough to beat now at home. Christian Brown, great off the bench for Denver. He posterized Rudy Gobert. He had a couple Mm -hmm. of huge flushes throughout the game. 
But the story is always for the Denver Nuggets. Now the guy who's going to win his third MVP award in the last four NBA seasons, Nikola Jokic. 41 points, 11 rebounds, 7 dimes. Plus 210 to record a triple-double pregame. He falls three assists shy. And DRS throughout this year it was a battle between Embiid and Jokic for who would get that MVP award, of course, with the injuries to JoJo. He was disqualified from the 65-game minimum. At that point, it really became Nikola Jokic's to lose. If you've had any questions about his performance, he answered that last night. Solidified mm-hmm. the MVP award in my estimation. And to your point, Denver now a stronghold on that top spot where if they have the top spot to get to a Western Conference championship, you have to go at altitude through the Mile High City. Denver this year, 33-8 and eight, straight up at home, 21-19-1 and one against the spread. They are the short favorites to win the West, plus 130 for the reigning NBA champions. And an impactful loss, not just for the T-Wolves not being in the one spot anymore, but because of the loss and a victory by the Oklahoma City Thunder, OKC has now won three in a row. Minnesota doesn't just fall to two. They fall all the way to three. Same record, 55 and 25 as Oklahoma City, but they're now in the three spot in the Western Conference. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see how this finishes out because, again, still a lot of high-leverage, high-pressure situations in these final two games. But I think if you're the Minnesota Timberwolves, you tried your best against the Nuggets here. You missed it by a couple days. Wouldn't you like the roles reverse to say, like, Carl Anthony Towns was going to come back against the Denver Nuggets if they played them in another two or three days at this point? And let's just say even played them in the Sunday finale. That would have been a fun one to watch. But it's just a shame he missed yeah. that game overall. But you are looking at maybe your second best player on the team by a wide margin coming back in to the fold. Now, he's not going to have a great ramp-up period like we're watching Joel Embiid with a similar injury, but again, that's what we expected. Embiid got injured with that knee injury before Carl Anthony Towns. I like what I'm seeing from the Timberwolves at this point now, and again, even in the loss, I like the showing because they didn't say, you know what, just not our time here. It's a tough one for, like, they hung around in that game, shot very well from the floor, and now getting an all-star back for the playoff run. Let's see what they do here. Ultimately did not cover, but the T-Wolves were up at the break. Now 12-9 and against the spread this year for Minnesota as an underdog over in five of their last six games. Minnesota's two final games, both at home in the Twin Cities. They host the Hawks and the Phoenix Suns in what could be a dramatic finale for both the Timberwolves and the Suns on Sunday afternoon. Denver's final home game, okay, They're on the road in San Antonio and Memphis. That's why the one-game advantage for the Nuggets, who are still going to need to win to clinch that top spot, is so big here in these final two games of the NBA regular season. Speaking of the Suns, somehow, someway, Phoenix just needed a win on the road last night in Los Angeles. Second straight game on the second consecutive night between the Clippers and the Suns. Tuesday night in Phoenix. Wednesday evening in Los Angeles. In Phoenix the Clippers won outright as a nine and a half point underdog with no Kawhi Leonard on the floor and no James Harden. LA decides on the second leg of a back-to-back. All right, fine. No James, no Kawhi, no PG, no Russ. They close as an 11 point home underdog. Had a lead Entering the fourth quarter before the Suns win the fourth and final 12 minutes by 17 points for a 16-point victory, 124-108. So Phoenix snaps a two-game skid. They cover as an 11-point favorite. But, Donnie, our favorite game is are we bought in on the Phoenix Suns or no? Are you bought in on the Phoenix Suns after last night's victory? If you would have told me the Phoenix Suns' big three came out with Durant with 24 points, Beal 26, Booker 37, a full go Clippers team, he beat them by double digits. Now we're starting to buy back in. But it's kind of funny the way this game turned out where, like, the Clippers were like, well, we're going to take this game off in Phoenix, and they won it. And then they go, no, now we're really going to take the back-to-back game off. Because it would have been fun to watch if the Clippers won that game with, like, a half of a staff over there and then went full staff at home and smoked the Suns in back-to-back games. That would be really a team in turmoil. But I did like the fact that the Phoenix Suns when the game really mattered, which of course is the fourth quarter, 32 to 15. That should have been every single quarter, 32 to 15, with the talent yeah, discrepancy yeah. <laughs> between the two ball clubs here. But Phoenix got the win, Phoenix got the cover. But to make a long story short, no, I'm not buying in on Phoenix. And we're going to talk neither. about it's early April right now. But why watch late May when we're still saying we're not buying in on Phoenix and they're in the NBA finals? But that's probably the way the NBA is going to go here in the playoffs. But right now, Nice win by Phoenix, not buying in because the Clippers didn't bring anything to the table last night. 
Again, if you just read a couple of things, Phoenix wins by 16 on mm -hmm. the road against the team that currently sits in the four seed in the Western Conference. They cover as an 11-point road favorite. And the big three, Beal, Booker, KD, combined for 87 of 124 points. You're like, yes, this Phoenix team is going to win the NBA championship. But it was not exactly that smooth of a ride last night in the city of Angels. So now we look at the Western Conference odds. Denver in that number one spot in $3 in front of the L.A. Clippers, who have the second best price at plus 440. OKC and Minnesota tied for the third best number at 7-1. Phoenix rounds out the top five at plus 900. I'm looking forward to it. I still do think the Denver Nuggets are the best team in the West here. So the plus 130 price isn't a great one overall. But I do think at the end, with them having home court advantage, that's going to be a big difference. But also, you still have to factor in the Clippers. When they're healthy, if they finally are for a playoff run, the damage they might be able to do. A young team that's hungry in OKC and also sits back there in those couple spots. The Phoenix Suns at a 9-1. to But how about those Dallas Mavericks? Not to win the NBA ah. championship, just to win the conference 13-1 to playing great basketball. Ben. The Mavericks have won 16 of their last 18. They will face off against the Clippers in the opening round. Now some reaction around the Eastern Conference next. him up as a Heisman Trophy winner, and he lights the league on fire like C.J. Stroud over a Bryce Young, you might not make it as a head coach or in your regime here. I just don't think they can pass over Daniels at number two. He's sitting at 5.8 goals, saved above average. He has been standing on top of his head for this team, but defense has to help him out a little bit. The Red Wings defense comes alive just a bit. I think that they're definitely going to punch their card. The Early Line, only on Sports Grid. Victor Hoffman right now can probably hit it right where he's looking on the range. But the problem is when you get out to a golf course, especially like Augusta National, it's a big, big picture. You can see yeah. every shot in the world, but the targets are really, really small. I feel like whoever we pick is going to win. Like, I feel like we have the power to choose the winner of this tournament. I know. I'm surprised more guys haven't reached out. I, I, and they might, and they probably will. Only on Sports Grid. 89-87, 0.6 seconds remaining. Big drama here in this game. Always frustrating when your final four parlay and bracket gets busted, but here we go. I'm done. Look what he is now. He's on FanDuel, plus 120. Almost even money to win the tournament. So you actually, if you did get him at plus 260, you got a pretty good, a better investment than you had before. Just saying. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows that QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So, yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you, when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid.
As we get ready for the NBA postseason, you want to be playing your best basketball to end out the regular year. And that's what the Dallas Mavericks are doing right now. The Mavs have won five straight games in 16 of their last 18. And they continue to make statement after statement. Last night in a critical game for both teams based on playoff positioning, the Mavs go into Miami and blow out the heat by nearly 20 points. 111-92, the final score. Dallas was a two and a half point road favorite and the market was working against them prior to tip last night in South Beach. Luka Doncic, 29 points, nine boards, nine dimes, a rather pedestrian night for Luka as of late, but Dallas continues to win all five starters in double figures. They knock off Miami by 19 and on this five game win streak, Donnie, they have covered in all five. In the 16 of last 18 games, they have covered 16 times in this 18-game span as well. Nobody in the NBA hotter than the Dallas Mavericks at this current juncture. No, certainly not. And being in South Beach, you could tell nobody on the Mavericks went out the day they got in and party because they were <laughs> out quick here. 33-24, Ben, first quarter. 36-23, second quarter. And it was a wrap after that. Impressive performance by the Mavericks. And also taking a look at that starting lineup. We always say, like, we expect greatness out of the two superstars in that lineup with Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic. But the question, since they made that move to get Kyrie, always was, Ben, well, who's going to step up and actually help them? Three other players in the starting lineup, each with 12 points here. That's how you help. That's how you do it on the road here. And the Dallas Mavericks now 50 and 30 on the regular season. One of those teams, Ben, that I think we all look at and say, boy, they're a fun team to watch. Luke is amazing. Eventually down the road, he's going to win an MVP. Kyrie certainly is a dynamic player. But they're one of those teams that always falls within that three, four, five, six range. Once they head into the playoffs, they might win around. Then they get bounced out. Is this the year that they can put it all yeah. together where they feel confident that they have those secondary level scores and players that can help those superstars at the top of the lineup? But also, most importantly, can they just stay healthy in this playoff run? If you ask me for a Western Conference team that I'm excited about in the playoffs, I mean, sure, you could, oh, the, you know, the Denver Nuggets are really good or the Phoenix Suns got the big three. It's actually the Mavericks. They're putting it together at the right time, and I think they can do some damage once they get to the playoffs listen Daniel Gafford has also been great for yes, Dallas good. in the interior in the post he shut down Bam at a bio last night Bam only had eight points and if Gafford shoots he often doesn't miss he was a perfect six of six from the floor last night as well again all five starters in double figures Luca leads the way with 29 Kyrie Irving also pours in 25 the Mavs have won 16 of their last 18, and they have covered in 16 of their last 18. Not in every win necessarily, but in this same dramatic span down the home stretch. Tyler Hero for Miami, leading scorer for the Heat last night, 21 points. He has been back now for just about a week after missing the entire month of March. He's been pretty good, but Miami falls into the eighth spot in the Eastern Conference standings. Now a full two games behind Indiana, who was in the sixth spot in Philadelphia, sandwiched in between if the season ended today. The Sixers, who are riding a six-game win streak, would host Miami in the 7-8 play-in tournament game all of these little things, all of these small changes in the standings on a daily basis, impactful for who you play and where you play in the postseason. That was the case for the Orlando Magic, who yesterday were going to host the opening round of the postseason. And now, after a big loss on the road, will be on the road before we get to the end of this regular season. Of course, still a lot to be determined. But the Magic... A gift in Milwaukee yesterday, supposedly, because they were going up against the Bucks without Giannis Antetokounmpo, who is now out for the remainder of this regular season, dealing with that calf injury. They hope to have him back in about a week or two. But Orlando closed as a two-point road favorite inside the Pfizer Forum against Milwaukee without Giannis. Dame goes off for 29 in big game BP. Bobby Portis, 30 points to lead all scores last night as Milwaukee routes Orlando at home, 117-99, winning outright as a two-point dog. 
Needed somebody to step up, and Portis was that guy. 14 of 18 from the floor, nine rebounds, five steals in that game. He was tremendous with a plus 22, and also an efficient performance out of Damian Lillard, something we don't say all that much from the Milwaukee Bucks, as he shoots 10 of 19 from the floor and chips in himself with 29 points. But the question mark here is, you know, most people are lining up like seed advantages and where it matters. The Orlando Magic dropping a little bit. It's one of those teams where I'm not really excited about a playoff run, because as I always state, like, they're a good basketball team. I just think they're one year ahead of their time overperforming if you will this season but if anybody's talking about like if you land in the playoff seeds where they're out of the top six here's the reason why it's important seven eight nine and ten oh if you're just in the play and it's the same thing all the way around no it's not nine and ten ben as we know that is an elimination game right off the bat and if you're the ninth seed at least you get that on your home court and if you're the tenth seed obviously it's going to be tough sledding now if you do win that game and let's just focus on the seven and eight the reason why you want to be in the seven as opposed to the eight seed is here the seven will host the eight the winner will move on into the playoffs but still the loser of that will still have home court advantage in that second elimination game. So a lot of people just think, oh, the play and it's set here. What is that, a three-game tournament swing? No, it's not. You want to be the highest seed possible in that play and round, which is why it matters, which, again, focusing back on the Miami Heat. Oh, it's no big deal if they lose a couple games at the end of the season. Just get healthy and play it. No, that's a massive deal where you should have been the seventh seed and just dropping to the eighth seed now puts you behind the eight ball because home court advantage in round number one. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out, but this is why we're so invested with just a couple games left to go in the NBA. Great things are happening right right now, and the seedings top to bottom continue to change every day. It just looks like the Orlando Magic now going to face the Philadelphia 76ers on Friday, and you know the Sixers have them now in their crosshairs. That's going to be a tough go for the Magic here as they close out their season, Ben. Listen, I bet Orlando yesterday at a minus Mm -hmm. 250 price to win the Southeast Division That's going to be a sweat here down the final two games of this regular season. Orlando falls into the five spot. Cleveland vaults up to the four spot. We'll talk about the Cavs, who now have a game advantage over Orlando in just a moment. To Donnie's point about Miami, the 7-8 play-in tournament game is going to be great. It's going to be Philadelphia, more than likely, and Miami, unless the Sixers catch the Pacers and Indiana falls in to the play-in tournament. Because Miami, despite the loss, still has a six and a half game advantage over the Chicago Bulls, who are in the nine spot, and Chicago a game and a half in front of Atlanta. The Hawks lost at home yesterday as a pretty hefty favorite against the Charlotte Hornets. Now I'm out on Atlanta again. I will continue to slander the Hawks down the home stretch of this regular season. I bring this up because Miami, Philadelphia, Indiana, they're going to be about six and a half, seven games better then Chicago and or Atlanta for what will be that second play-in game Mm -hmm. to determine the eighth seed. Because right now, Chicago is going to get in the play-in tournament five games below 500. The Hawks are eight games below 500. So, as we said, Orlando falls into the five spot in the Eastern Conference standings. Cleveland needed a win last night. The Cavaliers have been struggling in a big way. Booked as an 18-and-a-half-point home favorite. You knew Cleveland could just win outright against the Memphis Grizzlies. But the Cavs had dropped three in a row in eight of their last 11, entering last night. Not the Bucks and the Magic, but the (laughs) Cavs and the Grizzlies. That one's a little bit mistaken. But 110-98, the Cavs get a victory. They don't cover as an 18-and-a-half-point favorite, but get a desperately needed win and still won by double digits. Yeah, they needed that. They really did. And also Donovan Mitchell back on the court, 9 of 17 from the floor, 5 of 10 from three-point range. If you're taking a look at how well they play, this is what's going to happen. Cleveland's going to fire a lot of three-point shots up, and if they make their fair majority of those, they're going to win games. 15 of 37 yesterday, 41% as a team. That'll get it done. You're just looking for Cleveland. Say, hey, man, stop this slippery slope here because there's a thought process yeah. that Cleveland might even be able to get up to that number two seed, which what Milwaukee was doing in faltering. Even though the Grizzlies are a bad basketball team, you still have to win games like this on your home yeah. court as it moves forward. And also, we talked about, or you were bringing up the Eastern Conference standings overall as they sit. Six, seven, and eight are going to be tremendous to watch. And also, you can probably include in that fifth seed, Orlando. Here's the interesting part, Ben. The Orlando Magic lose the tiebreaker to the Philadelphia 76ers. So if the Sixers do beat the Magic right. on Friday night, the Sixers move ahead of them. But if all three teams tie, the Pacers, Magic, and Sixers, the Pacers get the, excuse me, the Orlando Magic get the nod because they would be division champions here. So wild. We're talking about this as if it's like the end NFL playoffs with two games to go where there's yeah. like 50 scenarios. It's crazy that the 
NBA with 82 games has so many scenarios yeah. left in the season. The key for these teams, just win basketball games. Things will take care of themselves here. So you don't have to scoreboard watch. The Knicks are in the three spot. The Heat mm-hmm. are in the eight spot. There are six teams, of course, combined in that group all separated by just three and a half games. So much can change here in the final four days, in the final two games of this NBA regular season. It's been a really disastrous year for Memphis. John Morant suspended for the first 25 games. He came back, gave them some life, and then, of course, was injured in early January for the remainder of the regular season. If you look at the Grizzlies starting lineup yesterday, You probably have no idea who some of these players are. Jake Laravia out of Wake Forest, game's leading score with 32. Gigi Jackson has been a bright spot, but this could be an addition of who he play for, and I'm not sure even the most devout NBA fans would recognize some of these names. Anyway, Eastern Conference odds at this moment. Minus 175, Boston far and away on its own tier out east. The market has worked against Milwaukee, Low threes earlier this week, plus 320, plus 350, moved back by two bucks with the uncertainty around Giannis Antetokounmpo. And now Philadelphia DRS, the only other team with three digits, plus 850. And also, that number for the Philadelphia 76ers now sits at a plus 800. That's factoring in the Sixers' mm. schedule the way out, and they're expecting the Sixers probably to land somewhere between that 6 and 7 seed. The 6 seed is probably that plus 8 to 1 price. If the Sixers fall back and have to fall to 7, that number is going to go lower. But we got a great finish to the season coming up here. Around Major League Baseball in the early goings up next. him up as a Heisman Trophy winner, and he lights the league on fire like C.J. Stroud over a Bryce Young, you might not make it as a head coach or in your regime here. I just don't think they can pass over Daniels at number two. He's sitting at 5.8 goals, saved above average. He has been standing on top of his head for this team, but defense has to help him out a little bit. The Red Wings defense comes alive just a bit. I think that they're definitely going to punch their card. The Early Line, only on Sports Grid. Victor Hoffman right now can probably hit it right where he's looking on the range. But the problem is when you get out to a golf course, especially like Augusta National, it's a big, big picture. You can see yeah. every shot in the world, but the targets are really, really small. I feel like whoever we pick is going to win. Like, I feel like we have the power to choose the winner of this tournament. I know. I'm surprised more guys haven't reached out. I, I, and they might, and they <laughs> probably will. Only on Sports Grid. 89-87, 0.6 seconds remaining. Big drama here in this game. Always frustrating when your final four parlay and bracket gets busted. But here we go. I'm done. Look what he is now. He's on FanDuel, plus 120. Almost even money to win the tournament. So you actually, if you did get him at plus 260, you got a pretty good, a better investment than you had before. Just saying. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So, yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one 
of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. As of this Thursday, officially two weeks into this Major League Baseball season, I guess a little bit longer because of the Seoul Series, the two games set in South Korea. But full MLB opening day two weeks ago from this moment. So it gives us a little bit more of a sample size here in the early and maybe middle-ish April. Big day yesterday, though, in Boston. Not for the Red Sox so much, but more for the Baltimore Orioles. The number one prospect in all of baseball, Jackson Holiday, called up by the Orioles, made his Major League Baseball debut yesterday in Fenway Park. And Baltimore gets a win, 7-5 over the Red Sox. The O's have taken both of the first two games of this series to start things off this week in Boston. Jackson Holiday did not record a hit but did have an RBI, which was crucial in a game decided by only two runs. Baltimore wins slightly as an underdog in Fenway for their second straight win in this series. Yeah, good win for them. And also Craig Kimbrell gets his second save of the season. The former Atlanta Braves, former Phillies closer has been around the block. So good start for him so far. But you like the fact that you got runs yesterday and also runs late for Baltimore. Take a look at that. Boston, a five to nothing lead after five innings, only to see seven unanswered from Baltimore in innings six and innings seven here. This is what we get. Sometimes the bullpen doesn't come up and sort of save you in these instances and putting out those fires and sometimes add some gasoline to the fires. But if we're looking at Holiday, as a player there's high expectations now granted yesterday was it a great performance oh for four at the excuse me uh yeah it was oh for four at the plate two strikeouts there yeah. but did get an rbi batting in the ninth hole here sometimes i like that too it's like don't put too much pressure on the kid like hey we expect big things uh we're gonna move santander out of the three hole and put the young kid in there he will find his way around but you have time for this because that lineup is really good one through nine now with holiday there Keep him up here. Let him get his swings in here. Don't put him on the bench. It's sink or swim right now. Because if he doesn't play well, Ben, let's just say for the first three weeks, sure, you send him back down. But this can't be one of those things which you always complain about in baseball. A high-level prospect gets moves up to the major leagues, but technically not ready and playing once every yeah. four days. You're never going to get your reps in. You're never going to get used to being there. So let the kid sink or swim over a couple hundred at-bats here, 150, maybe 200 at-bats to see what he really has. Right. But I love the fact that the Baltimore Orioles did bring him up. The debut didn't work out all that well. But me, I'm an RBI guy. Guy got an RBI. That was like a Picasso yesterday for me, if you were betting, because that's the way I would have bet him to at least get one RBI. Yeah. Don't even need a base hit. Bright future here for the kid, no doubt about it, though. Nearly a $2 favorite was Jackson Holiday, of course, the son of Matt Holiday, longtime MLBer as well. Nearly a $2 favorite, minus 190 for Holiday to record a base knock in his Major League Baseball debut. Doesn't do that, but does get the RBI in the top of the sixth as the O's started to make their rally on a fielder's choice. Now, here's the really interesting thing, DRS. He was in the nine hole. Right before him was Jordan Westberg. He hit the game-winning three-run shot in the seventh he had three ribbies yesterday and then in front of Westberg was Colin Kowser another rookie for Baltimore who has been great to start this year he had a two RBI single and scored a run on Holiday's RBI when you're looking at this Baltimore lineup the starting lineup yesterday that had all their big guns in there Gunnar Henderson Adley Rutschman Anthony Santander Cedric Mullins nobody is older than 30 years old this team is young They are fun. It is the core that won more than 100 games last year and probably overperformed on expectation to be the one seed in the American League postseason. But now they take that experience with a even more developed young core. And this Baltimore team is certainly one to keep an eye on in the American League pennant race. They are now 7-4 and four this year. They have won both of the games in Boston to start this series. Now we go elsewhere in the American League East. Yesterday inside Yankee Stadium, do we clap it up? Do we? Mm. Yeah, we do. 5-2 to two, the victory for the Fish. 
Miami Dubs. gets their second win of the season. Big win for Miami yesterday, DRS. They are now 2-11, and 11, and they win as a pretty hefty underdog. The Yanks were booked as a minus 220 home money line favorite. Yeah, they probably should have pounded them, the Yankees. You're right, but it's baseball. No team is going 162-0. and No team is winning 140 baseball games. Winning a series, which means taking two of three, is the name of the game. You do that a lot, you're going to be a very good baseball team. But yesterday, you're looking at the pitching matchups here, which is primarily why we yeah. bet these games. Stroman was on the mound, didn't figure out too well yesterday. Five innings pitched, four earned runs. Right. But it was Ryan Weathers, a guy that's just been around baseball. Let's see what you got here on a Marlins team that's really down and injured, particularly at the pitching position. Five innings pitched. Pitch, three three hits, no earned runs. That's tremendous here. And also keep in mind, a lot of times we see in Major League Baseball, it's all about the strikeouts. Like, hey, if they can't put the ball in play, you're not going to score a lot of runs. That's pretty impressive to go five innings, not give up a run, and only have one yeah. strikeout in Yankee Stadium against that lineup. So he was certainly working the fastball inside, outside, keeping them off balance. Marlins, second win of the season here. By the way, Come that on, wasn't man. against another team that was really struggling, like the White Sox, man. No. You beat the Yanks who came in that game on the road at a 10-2 and two clip here. There you go, Marlins. I don't know. Maybe the start of something or nothing. Big win for the Fish up in the Bronx. They avoid the sweep against the Yankees mm-hmm. in this midweek series. For Miami also, they have not been great on the run line despite a 2-11 and start. You hope, like the White Sox really have been, all right, you're losing games, but is it close? Are you losing by just a single run? Are you keeping games competitive? For Miami, for a good part of this year, no. But they have won on the, or at least covered on the run line in three of their previous four games. Now 3-10 and 10 run line record, 2-11 and 11 straight up. The American League East is going to be the best division, in my estimation, in the AL all year. That was the expectation. The Blue Jays did lose yesterday up in Toronto. They are the only team, though, that is below 500. We'll get to that game in just a moment because the Mariners won in 10 innings in extras but won 6-1 to one by plating five yeah. in that 10th and final inning. But when you look at the Blue Jays, they're the only team in the American League East that is below 500. The Red Sox lost both games to start this series against the Orioles this week. And in the seller from the odds perspective at 21 to 1. But I don't even think the floor of this division is really all that low. No, it's not. And also, maybe the surprise, which is crazy to say, is the Boston Red Sox at 7-5. and five. As you still see those numbers here to win the AL East, the bottom feeder right now is the Boston Red Sox, and rightfully so. Over 162-game slate, you are supposed to see the cream rise to the top, and they right. will, but that's a pretty good division from start to finish to open with the Yankees getting out so hot. We know the Baltimore Orioles will be on their tail the entire season. We're expecting big things as usual from the Toronto right. Blue Jays with that power-hitting lineup and a very strong pitching staff, and then it's always the Tampa Bay Rays. You could just take the names off of the back of the jerseys. It doesn't matter. That organization just knows how to win and knows how to hang around. It's always been a tough division to win, maybe even tougher this year, particularly if the Boston Red Sox for, you know, 25 years, always at the top of the standings here and spending a ton of money. I don't know what their franchise is doing yeah. at this point right now, but I'm sure they'll take a seven and five start here to start the season. The pinstripes entered the year as the favorites in the American League East, but it was plus money, now minus money after this strong start, despite the loss to Miami, still 10-3. and three. But two teams entered yesterday's MLB slate with double-digit wins. Neither got to 11. The Yankees still at 10, the same for the Dodgers, as Minnesota avoids a sweep in its series finale at home, snapping a four-game skid against Los Angeles. Edouard Julien, two home runs in the game, including the game-winning homer in the fifth inning. As Minnesota wins 3-2, to two, outright as an underdog at home over the Dodgers. Yeah, it's funny. You say, you know, you, let's line up a total in this baseball game. And I tell you right off the bat, Ben, you're going to get three home runs. Like, oh, man, they're going to really go over that total. No, a 3-2 yeah. to two final. This is what we expect out of the Minnesota Twins. We're going to be a feisty team in the AL Central. Paddock was on the mound yesterday. It was okay. Four and two-third innings, two earned runs. Miller there, four innings and only two earned runs for him. So some sketchy starts right out of the gate for him. He's supposed to have some high expectations to sort of hold that pitching staff together until they get some of their starters back probably midway through the season. And of course, the Dodgers look Looking to add on at the trade deadline as always. Once again, not going to win every game here. Nobody's panicking on the Dodgers. That is a dominant team from start to finish. And 10 and 5 after 15 games, tell any Dodgers fan that's going to be a record. They would be okay. You know what? That's just fine. Let's continue with our season.
The Dodgers, the only team into the National League with double digit wins. Of course, it's the Yankees and the Dodgers. LA has a bump. They've played 15 games where pretty much everybody else is at 12 or 13 at this moment. But LA is the only team in the NL West above 500 at this time as well. And the Dodgers have dominated this division the last decade plus. They have won the NL West crown. 10 of the last 11 MLB seasons, and now a minus 1,000 favorite Mm. to win the National League West once again in 2024. I say a minus 1,000 favorite to win the National League West as we look at the Dodgers' outlook right there. Mm. So the Dodgers fine despite the loss yesterday in the Twin Cities. The team with the second-best win percentage despite being below 500 in the National League West, the San Diego Padres. They hammered. The Cubs at home yesterday in Southern California, 10-2 to the win for San Diego. These two teams tied, two all in the fourth inning. The Padres scored the final eight runs of the game, 10 to the victory. San Diego greater than a dollar and a half favorite on that money line. As a home favorite, they make good on the price. Yeah, Dylan Cease out there dealing yesterday. Six innings pitch, two earned runs. Exactly what you want out of your starter here. A 100-pitch effort there. Good for him. Hendricks, I thought, was going to be a little bit uh, susceptible yesterday, and he was. Five innings pitch, nine hits, seven earned runs. All of those earned runs uh, certainly coming, or excuse me, earned runs here, as opposed to scoring someone some errors and also giving up two home runs. But I had to wait late into this game, though. Granted, I wasn't up late. I had a Fernando Tatis RBI prop that I bet, and I sort of was watching early. And I was, How is this going to be possible? They scored nine runs, and Tatis does, in fact, in any one of those nine runs, will you wait to the bottom of the eighth inning? Better late than never. Tatis gets an RBI, goes one for four on the night Needed at a it. price point of a plus 150. That was pretty sweet here to wake up and see that happen. But away we go. The Padres trying to fight back the respectability and get over 500. DRS, I am happy for you. Central focus yes, now at you. the Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati. And the Brewers jumped all over the Reds early and often. Christian Yelich, two-run shot in the top of the first. The Brewers scored six runs by the end of the fourth, and they win 7-2 to two over Cincinnati in Cincy. National League Central. Again, everybody continues to play relatively good baseball. The Cardinals below 500, but the only team below 500. The Reds at 6-6. Six and six. Everybody else above 500 early in this MLB season. Yeah, let's take a look what the Cincinnati Reds can do this season because I know they lost some components last year, but they're expecting some young players to step up, which includes Hunter Green, who's that next-level guy who's supposed to be the ace of their staff. Yesterday, Ben, six innings pitched, six earned runs in that game. Did have nine Ks but gave up two home runs. They need better performances out of him if they want to be a contender here in the Central, but a good win for the Brewers, eight and three overall, and Yelich just continues to stand out in that lineup, now hitting three sixteen on the season after plating two yeah. more RBI yesterday. It's a really good point about Christian Yelich. It's what Craig Mish told us yesterday during the daily basis. He would look to Milwaukee as long as Yelich was in the lineup, mm-hmm. and he was, and he hit a two-run bomb in the uh, top of the first inning. A big win for Milwaukee. The Brewers, 8-3 and three and 5-1 and one away from the state of Wisconsin to start off this year. A really mm-hmm. strong start for the Brew Crew. As we said, the Cardinals are the favorites in the National League Central, despite being the only team that is below 500. But look at all of these teams here. Everybody's separated by less than five and a half bucks, all the way down to the Pirates, who have the best record in this division at nine and three. The Cardinals did lose at home yesterday, some day baseball under the arch to the Philadelphia Phillies, four to three, the win for the Phils. So on the other side of the break, We turn our attention for Major League Baseball, the Daily Diamond Dash, and we got a little bit of puck talk. Puck talk Mm. with DRS and myself. Final week of the NHL regular season before the Stanley Cup playoffs begin. On the other side of the break, here on the early line. him up as a Heisman Trophy winner, and he lights the league on fire like C.J. Stroud over a Bryce Young, you might not make it as a head coach or in your regime here. I just don't think they can pass over Daniels at number two. He's sitting at 5.8 goals, saved above average. He has been standing on top of his head for this team, but defense has to help him out a little bit. The Red Wings defense comes alive just a bit. I think that they're definitely going to punch their card. The Early Line, only on Sports Grid. 
Victor Hovland right now can probably hit it right where he's looking on the range. But the problem is when you get out to a golf course, especially like Augusta National, it's a big, big picture. You can see yeah. every shot in the world, but the targets are really, really small. I feel like whoever we pick is going to win. Like, I feel like we have the power to choose the winner of this tournament. I know. I'm surprised more guys haven't reached out. I, I, and they might, and they <laughs> probably will. Only on Sports Grid. 89-87, 0 0.6 seconds remaining. Big drama here in this game. Always frustrating when your final four parlay and bracket gets busted, but here we go. I'm done. Look what he is now. He's on FanDuel, plus 120. Almost even money to win the tournament. So you actually, if you did get him at plus 260, you got a pretty good, better investment than you had before. Just saying. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So, yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to game time decision that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you, when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Live right here on the early line on this Thursday, rounding out our opening hour. It's Donnie Wright's side. It's Ben Stevens, and it's nearly the end of the NHL regular season as well. Exactly one week from today, the regular season on the ice is done. And what some might argue is the best postseason in all of sports, the Stanley Cup playoffs begin. More key matchup last night out in the Western Conference between the Oilers and and in that matchup, the Vegas Golden Knights, the reigning Stanley Cup champs. Edmonton wins on home ice 5-1. Minus 118 as your money line favorites. Huge upset, though, up in Vancouver. Mm. The Canucks were greater than a $2 favorite, nearly two and a half bucks on that money line. The Arizona Coyotes win in OT 4-3. And the St. Louis Blues knock off the Blackhawks 5-2. Puck talk. With Ben and Donnie, you can expect that through the Stanley Cup postseason. Absolutely. And by the way, that Canucks game, you're right about that. That was a massive, massive price. And yesterday we were talking some hockey, asking questions to Casey, saying, you know what? Who is right. actually going to be able to win this game? And can you actually change your handicapping strategies based on a team that's in the playoffs and a team that can't make the playoffs? How about that last night? They still collect paychecks here. And those guys still have some pride as well, getting that 4-3 to three victory. But who can doubt? The Edmonton Oilers, with a guy like Leon Dreisaitl finding the back of the net, lighting the lamp oh. up on his skates. My goodness, last night. Did you catch that action for the Oilers? That's my adoption. The Flyers are never going to compete on any level anymore right. in the NHL. I like the no, Edmonton Oilers. No. I think I can put on the sweater no. and have some fun on the Oilers. Yeah. Yeah. You're such a liar, dude. Unless you're just trying to ingratiate yourself with our guests like Casey Hudson. Yesterday, you said you're a Lightning fan. Don't be that wishy-washy uh, in the span of look, 24 hours. I, but it, you can be a fan of teams exactly. But the Edmonton Oilers, like, oh. it's going back to my childhood when I saw Wayne Gretzky play live. I was really always an Oilers guy at that point, wasn't oh. I? So it's come full yeah. circle now. Yeah. 
All right, fair enough. Okay, you can be an Oilers fan. They sit second in the Pacific Division, by the way. A lot to be determined in terms of those wild card races, though, especially in the Eastern Conference. Puck talk. That was fun. Hour two starts in less than a minute.